Hi, my name is Rafik Nybrook. I'm with SIAT and I'll be presenting today. This work is a collaboration with Tom Smucker at Ohio University. And our presentation is looking at a community-based irrigation farm in Tanzania. The main research question is to say if we can use um, institutional and biophysical dimension of sustainability to look at um, long-term sustainability of a community farm and irrigation scheme, um, which we view as a, a common pool resource. And this has implication for wider challenges in East Africa in terms of land fragmentation and sustainable intensification with irrigation. The farm is located about 20 kilometers south of Moshi um, in a small town called Mdakuja, which is uh, in relation to Mount Kilimanjaro in Arusha. You can see there on the, on the map in the right corner. Arusha is important in terms of a town for market access, uh, purchasing inputs, and um, generally being the biggest city in the neighborhood. The village, which used to be uh, one village, now it's two sub-villages, we, we treat it still as one, um, is located within a sugarcane farm, an 8,000 hectare farm, which plays a significant role in the development of the community as a whole that we'll be looking at. So just keeping that in mind. Um, the two sub-villages are called Mitsirikia and Takuja. It's about 6,000 households. They have a Ujama uh, history and they have very high ethnic diversity. The farm is about 120 acres and consists of half acre plots. And so with 600 households and 240 plots, that's not enough for everybody. Um, and we'll look at the rules for how people access um, a plot. It's not a collective farm. People do get individual plots which they have to manage individually with their own resources. Uh, why do we call this a common pool resource? Well, um, from uh, the farming perspective, it's, it's non-excludable. Um, everybody in the community gets access to a plot and it is extractable in terms of uh, looking at soil health. So there's while, while there's available water, there's uh, available land, a limit, limited number of land, but really in terms of agriculture, you can look at the soil and soil nutrients that are continuously mined as being an extractable resource. Um, the farm was expanded recently uh, with the community taking a loan. So far they've made every single payment. And it's important to notice that it's part of the wider Kilimanjaro hydrology, which means it rains a lot up in the mountains, but it is quite dry in the lowlands. Um, but it still has a very high water table, which is also why the sugarcane farm is able to be there. Uh, we collected data in 2016 and 2018, and we use an IAD framework uh, in our analysis. The red square is where the farm is located within these two communities. Um, in institutional actors, are there are a few. I want to start with FTK, a local NGO which um, receives support from Femi Foundation in the Netherlands and uh, the, uh, the sugarcane farm. They are instrumental in the setup of this farm. They've been doing work in these communities for a long time in terms of healthcare, education, economic opportunities, and found that food security was critical. It took them two years to convince the community to set up the farm because uh, the 120 acres um, for the farm or 200 acres um, meant that some people would have to give up land. Essentially, community land was not sufficient for this size farm, and it wouldn't have been worth it otherwise. The Tanzania Plantations Company is a second largest sugarcane farm in the region. Through their corporate social responsibility, they fund some of the work of FTK um, and they provide employment for the people in the community. Village councils are elected and the chairs are basically the highest elected representatives and they have a significant power uh, uh, role of power within this. And then MDO is the um, development organization that was set up by FTK, which does all of the management of uh, equipment and staff and uh, and the farm. And the village council chairs have, again, a role in terms of the boards, the board of MDO. On the right is a typical flyer that is posted for the community to see how they access uh, a plot, the, uh, the lottery system, the, the, the payment system, etc. In terms of interstitial mapping, then, uh, you can see on the right that TPC, the sugarcane farm and international donors sort of remain on the outside of all of this, uh, even though they have a overwhelming physical presence. FTK plays a facilitation role 
um, the village council communities, um, the chairs, then give legitimacy to the Kuja Development Organization, the MDO, which then manages the farm. And in turn, the community members, the community assembly, gets use rights of the farm. So we use the sustainable uh, uh, design principles uh, to look at the sustainability of this farm. And we don't want to read the whole slide, but just focus on the red text. So we're really interested in uh, the boundaries of who's in and who's out and the boundaries of the pool of the resources. Um, we want to look at the distribution of benefits. Uh, what is really critical in most of these schemes is the operational rules and the rules about changing the rules. How do they get to be modified? Um, in terms of mon monitoring and conflict, we want to look at how a conflict is resolved and how quickly it can be resolved. And then uh, lastly, for rules breakers, um, order clear uh, um, rules for, uh, for violators. The farm uh, irrigation is done in, generally in two ways, the sprinkler and uh, surface irrigation. Uh, what's important to note here is that the equipment on the left is what is used by TPC. So people are really familiar with it and there's a lot of spare parts and a lot of uh, equipment available. Um, and on the right, you can see some fertilizer and mixed cropping um, in, in the fields uh, ready to be irrigated. So the IAD framework lends itself really well to looking at the sustainability. Um, starting with the rules and use, um, FTK set up the very first rules, which were then adopted by the village council. Um, one of these rules, or three of these rules, mean that people who gave up land get guaranteed access each growing season, and there are three growing seasons. Um, for the remaining people, there is a lottery sister system, and payment is done up front. Uh, FTK also set up the MDO, which manages the farm. Because of the initial rules that were set up by uh, FDK, there seems to be some confusion about modification of rules. In terms of the action arena then, uh, water, the availability of water essentially makes uh, intensive farming possible, but it also requires quality inputs and increasingly people are borrowing land from outsiders from these communities and which puts into question who is in and who is out. So it becomes a bit of a boundary problem. Um, in terms of the actual operations and the outcomes uh, of the action situation, we see that intensive agriculture also increases pest and disease problems. And this is a collective action problem. You cannot treat your, your, your pests in one plot if your neighbors don't have the means to treat uh, pests in their plot. Um, so while it's still very profitable, um, we see diminishing returns over time. And one critical aspect in terms of soil health is that there's no incentive to uh, invest in your soil health. Uh, no one on the farm will purchase expensive manure uh, to improve crop yields and uh, increase soil health if uh, they don't get the plot again in the next growing season. So it requires an adaptive management solution and a look at the rules and how to change the rules. Uh, beyond that, uh, we know that groundwater might become a problem. So this is a bit of a boundary issue question in terms of um, the water availability. Uh, the sugarcane farm monitors the water, um, but those data are not available and the government doesn't make uh, any available data available either. So we don't know what the, the water situation is in terms of sustainability, but it seems okay. Um, power is increasingly becoming a problem. The, the system had been shut off twice because they couldn't pay the power bill. And it's ironic that TPC sells power to the government uh, through Tenesco, but Tenesco then sells power back to MDO at a profit. So even though TPC can sell or give power directly to the MDO, the government does not allow. Um, in terms of how decisions are made, the, the relationship between MDO and village councils is a tricky one. The village councils have a bit more control. So while there are monthly meetings where residents can uh, air their grievances, changes cannot be made to the rules without village council approval, and they only meet once a year. So how do we increase agency of MDO and farmers? And what's the role of FTK in all of this when this NGO really wants to stay outside and allow the community to take control over management of the farm? Some of the issues that I just mentioned are pest uh, damage in the crops, use of pesticides, um, uh, the farm is still very profitable. Tomatoes are sold in local towns and in Arusha. Um, and it also provides some employment to people who um, 
are not um, who do not have a plot that's in the lower right corner you can see day, day laborers so quickly going through concluding remarks the design principles and id framework are very effective tool for communicating um, and doing advocacy and i think um, the community and mdo should use more uh, make more use of this in in speaking to uh, the government or with donors um, while the farm is very profitable we see diminishing returns and there will be a point of reckoning and uh, the question is whether the institutional arrangements can adapt in time to guarantee the sustainability in the long run. Um, the scheme could work uh, in other regions, not just dryland regions, um, but we think that if it is replicated or if it is adapted uh, here, there needs to be some dedicated research plots and bring in some experts from outside to look at soil fertility and pest management issues. Um, not just expertise outside, we also think that local knowledge remains on tap because it is set up the way it is with people doing individual work and there's no way uh, effectively for community members to help uh, to make uh, suggestions for how the rules can be changed and that's a really an untapped resource. Finally, in terms of sort of wider research of CPR dimensions, when you look at farming systems and soil systems, we think that there's probably some room for um, looking at soil nutrients, carbon biology that doesn't always neatly fit in with uh, CPR research. And, you know, more traditionally, we've looked at irrigation systems and fisheries and forest management. And some of these don't neatly fit that box. And um, just curious how we can advance this research. So I end with this picture from Takuja Farm. Uh, we hope to see this as a successful, sustainable farm uh, that is adaptively managed for a very long time. And hopefully the institutional arrangements can uh, can guarantee that. Thank you.